Yesterday, I was watching a video by Sovereign Gaming about how many button presses it takes to beat LEGO Star Wars, and I thought, huh, I wonder how this idea would translate into Isaac, and well, here we are. I beat Isaac with only two button presses, and no, this is not a joke. First off, let's define what a button press is. A button press is pressing down a key or button on your controller and releasing it. For example, placing a bomb, shooting, using an active item, or using W, A, S, and D are all considered presses. So, how did I do it? Well, not how you expect. There was no co-op, no sacrificing, and no glitches. It's actually quite simple. As all runs start, I held R with Eden until I found a good seed and ran with it. Before we get into my post-commentary, let me set the rules. Shooting in any way is a button press. Placing a bomb is a button press. Using an active item is a button press. And moving is a button press. Now, you might be asking yourself, how the hell did you go all the way through the game without moving more than once? Well, that too is simple. I'm a controller player. This means I get full 360 degree movement if I don't ever let go of the movement stick. It's only one button press. So if that covers one button press, what about the other one? What did I do? Well, weirdly enough, the other button press was me using death certificate to get a key item for this run. So in short, this run is accomplished by never standing still and just being a god gamer. Let's get into the unscripted post-commentary part of the video, aka the full run. Welcome back everyone to the uh, two button press Isaac run. This was such a fun challenge to do and you'll see right off the bat here, after this next room, the first two and only button presses happen literally back to back. I'll hold R right here and restart, death starts one button press and then immediately I start moving which is button press number two. Now from this point on, I never stop moving. I'm always in a constant state of moving. The analog, you know, uh, the, whatever it's called, the analog stick is always pushed down and always in a direction, so I'm never, ever, ever standing still, which makes this only two button presses. Now you'll see, my starting item here is Ipecac. What would I pair this with? M m some of you might think, you know, Mom's Knife, right? You'd be dead wrong, kid. When you have Ipecac Mom's Knife, you only have a four damage Mom's Knife, sadly. It doesn't, st you know, go that high up with damage. It's not 40 at least. With Destiny Spear, however, it keeps that 40 because it's not directly your tier so the game doesn't debuff the damage on it so you actually get to keep that 40 damage and have a great long melee weapon another benefit of having this over mom's knife is the fact that um it's bigger so from that little white i guess it's green in this you know synergy here with a little white strip on the, on the blade anything in between that and you will not do damage but the end of the blade to that white strip will do damage based on your tiers and also i guess your tier rate as well but i didn't get any tier ups in this run at all so it didn't really matter too much but it's technically a, a further out mom's knife. Plus, I can't shoot at all anyway, so why would I even want mom's knife? It's just, it's just smaller and weaker, you know? If I had a nickel, but that it's, it's just better. It's just better for this run straight up because of those, you know, few reasons. Um, I get Jacob's Ladder as well. I don't ever use it, but it's just it's there, so why not just grab it? But yeah, you'll see on this run, I'm literally always moving. If I ever slow down, it looks like I'm standing still almost. I'm either a walking against or towards like, you know, against like a wall or an object. So I'm still have the button pushed down or I'm doing a special thing. Only controller users can do in eyes. If you're playing on keyboard, if you're playing on keyboard, um, you can only move at full speeds, no matter how lightly or quickly you press your buttons. You're always moving at full speed with controller. However, you can move at partial speeds by just kind of angling it, you know, slightly, not, not all the way to the edge, but slightly angling it. You can move at these, you know, half third quarter speeds. The reason that's so valuable to me in this run is because there are a lot of enemies in this game that really rely on you, you know, making some very slight dodges. If you're moving at always full speed, you're going to be making some very egregious moves on this run. So not only does this save me like a million button presses, it also makes it so I can dodge a lot cleaner and more precisely. Because the biggest drawback of this run not being able to shoot is that I'm pretty much always on the defensive when it comes to fighting bosses. And if I'm over dodging or overcompensating my dodges, I'm getting hit a lot, I'm losing HP, and I'm going to die. Um, you'll also notice, you know, that this run is obviously seated. Um, at only at this point, like, what, as, as of this, you know, recording in the background here, this actual run, I had only seen up to Depths 1. I had not made it past Depths 1. So the first, like, half of this run is, like, very well thought out, very well planned. I, I know what items I need, what I got to do to get them. After depth one, I kind of like I start taking some wrong some wrong paths and, and making some mistakes, and I get really low on health. But of course, you're watching the video, so it ended up working out. But I walk into the pinfight here. Also, I can't skip the boss cutscenes because I can't press A to skip them. So, oh god, pin went crazy there. Jesus Christ. So that's why the, 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 they're on for so long. But 
Yeah, I'm, this is a great run to do. And here I'm gonna get my, my next most important item on the run. Cat of Ninetales. No, Judas's Shadow. This is, you might be thinking, oh, that's going to be a huge damage up, right? It doesn't actually give you like 80 damage. It only gives you plus seven damage, but it's more important for a different reason. So as you know, Judas's Shadow turns you into Dark Judas. Now, Dark Judas has, he has a unique mechanic that he can't take red hearts at all. He can only take black hearts and soul hearts. And every HP up becomes black hearts. Now, this is so important on this run because there are certain rooms, as you can probably guess, that you can't beat in this game without firing a tier. How do we get around that, you might ask? Well, black hearts do damage to every single enemy in the room. So, potentially, if I'm in a room that requires me to shoot, I can just turn into Dark Judas and walk in and black heart bomb it, thereby, you know, skipping the entire room and doing a lot of damage in the process. Which actually happens, you know, on this run. I pick it up and I'm thinking, okay, if for some reason in the future I need to black heart bomb, I now have the option to do it, you know, in my, my back pocket, right? It's a huge, 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 huge important thing for us. And actually, it does work out on the womb for us. But the other thing we get on this run is when we, when we picked up Belly Button, we got our second trinket, which is Blessed Penny. Blessed Penny saves this run more than any other item I have 100%. I would have died 16 times over without it. It would have been horrendous. Now, I almost take Twisted Pear here because it's a great item, right? But I can't shoot, so there's no point in taking it, so I just move on. I also wanted to save my extra life for a more, you know, important or, or dire circumstance. We're going to the, to the uh, Caves 2 here, which is a pretty average floor. Um, we don't get anything super, super impressive here, if I recall correctly. We just kind of do it normally. I walk up, I kill some pins in this room, and we're good to go. I don't really need any more damage or tears in the entire run, as you can probably can tell. I have a great, great amount of stats right now, but... It's still nice to min-max. On, on a challenge run like this, where I'm always has to be moving and always have to be in a good state of mind... I want to have as many avenues of success as possible, which I try to go for on some of these floors. I don't really strategize or plan to my own hindrance, uh, obviously, until like womb one or no womb two. I noticed that on womb two, because I was struggling for HP, that I'm gonna need to use this arcade. Now the benefit of the arcade is if I give like let's say I give like the the skull beggar some money, right? He can turn that money into more coins on the ground that can proc with blessed penny. So I should have been, you know, in hindsight here, using my arcades every floor I could. But because I'm a dumbass, I wasn't. <laughs> so I'm going to make some pretty egregious mistakes walking past arcades and stuff, but it's all right. The run obviously works out. The biggest fear was Satan. You might be thinking to yourself as well, again, why are you going to Satan on this run? What is going through your head? Satan's a, a you know, much more difficult boss than, you know, Isaac or Blue Baby would be, especially the lamb. I kind of have to disagree with you on that one. Satan, you can kill with a melee build pretty easily because he, you know, he, he stands at the top of the room and he can't really attack behind him very well. Isaac has tears coming out of every direction. Isaac would have taken years to kill. I would have had to walk, you know, in. I would have been, by the way, I would have had to play above him, which playing above Isaac is not where you want to be. You want to be playing, you know, below him. Or, no, sorry, not below him. To the sides. Because his tears, if you stand on the left or right of the side of the room, will always like dissipate before they hit you. Standing above, I'm not used to. I wouldn't be able to do properly. It would be horrendous. So I figured to myself, also clutch spirit heart right here. I figured to myself, I'm going to go to Satan. But the problem is I need Polaroid invincibility because I had a feeling I was going to become Dark Judas at some point on the run. Whether it be by, by choice or by force, I'm going to become Black Judas. And that character, because he can only have soul hearts, is always going to be procking your Polaroid invincibility. Negative is great too, but I don't really need... You know, I guess maybe negative would have been better, maybe, because I would have been able to do... Well, no, it wouldn't have been better, because black hearts would have done full heart. Never mind. The negative is bonus is it gives you damage and also does mass room damage when you get hit on half a heart. Um, but black hearts already do mass room damage as Dark Judas, so there really was no point to having that. So Polaroid for the extra iframes to walk into enemies and do a shit ton of damage is definitely the right choice. But I didn't want to go fight Isaac. So you'll see, I'm going to end the run early, you could say. Even though it still counts as winning, because it gave me a cutscene, obviously. I'm gonna take the Polaroid and go to the go to the go to Shoal, which is the only reason this. If I would have gone to Cathedral, I would have been dead. I think straight up, honestly. Um, I make some pretty sick plays in Shoal. One really impressive like leech play that happens. I'll have to show you guys obviously later when it comes to that point in the run. But yeah, no, this this run had a lot of things set against it. Obviously, I can't shoot, I can't stop moving, stuff like that. But I think we overcame our, our obstacles and our odds very, very, very well. I, I was happy with this run. And I hope it, it doesn't it obviously isn't like a speed run because God forbid I don't want to do a speed run of, of, of a <laughs> minimum button press run more just like a regular challenge run but adversary goes down there easily. Spirit heart here is also very clutch. Next floor is the mob fight. 
But I'd say the hardest thing in this run was was fighting Mom's Heart and fighting Satan. Probably Satan more than Mom's Heart because I could have probably died in a lot more ways than I ended up not dying in. But Mom's Heart was... Oh boy. Like, the thing with Mom's Heart... <laughs> excuse me, my nose is really weird. Um, is that... You also, along... Just like Isaac, you want to stand to the side of the room. Above her, you can't see anything because she blocks the way and you can't see where tears are. And below her, you don't have enough room to really dodge effectively. But I can't stand to the side of any enemy because my finger is pointing up and my uh, stupid sword is stuck facing down forever. So I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? I decide to, you know, just get a bunch of soul hearts and farm for Polaroid invincibility and just go ham on it. It ends up working out. Here I get Luna. I was really praying for Mercurius, but we get Luna here, which is, it, it's all right. I end up actually saving the run later on, so watch out for that. But Mom's heart was just challenging. Satan, I, I did first try because I hadn't been down there before. I, I, obviously, the run is completed right now, but it was still really fucking scary, man. Those I didn't you know take into account how hard it would be to dodge those randomly moving leeches because those do a number on you. But this is a very funny item room. It's very funny, haha. So when I walk in here, I see stitches, and if I would have had panic button on this run, I would have been able to do like a stitches panic button, probably like a zero button press run because I could have just telefragged every enemy, you know? That, that, I think the only one that's ever going to be beaten, because I don't expect a uh, uh, one button press run to happen at any time soon, at least. It would have to be a panic button, stitches, like Mercurius start or something like that, like just to make it, you know, viable. But I don't, I don't really see a one button run, you know, happening soon. I mean, you could obviously reset until you start with Destiny Spear and then walk into a, you know, a first room item room and get Ipecac, but because that would save you your Death Cert pop. But I, that's that's very astronomically low odds. And the fact that someone would record themselves resetting until they got that to prove that it's legit would be next to zero, I would say. Mom goes down here, I get my sword, I kind of play which one I want, I decide Polaroid in the end, walk into my deal and get nothing valuable because <laughs> it sucks and there's no point to having the Void or Pound of Flesh. So I walk out and head down to the womb floor here. This is where the run gets shaken up because womb does double damage. Every floor after deaths, if you aren't aware, does double damage, which is scary, man. It, like That pretty much halves my HP from here on out. But I think I handle Womb 1 well. Womb 2 is one where I kind of choke a little bit and have to uh, make up some of my, my lost <laughs> HP and such. But the final boss of this floor is Teratoma, who probably is the worst boss I could have gotten. Because if I would have gotten like double Loki or even Blast Assist, I would have been able just to walk in and dust them right away. Teratoma splits into like, you know, first it's four pieces, then two, then it's two more spiders. I gotta focus here. This, this part of this, the run is where the tides kind of shift. Um, the ticks, I, knew, I realized, are really bad for me. They're, they're hit me a lot, and I can't really do a lot of damage to them right away until I st unless I stand still, which I can't do on most of these rooms. Now, I get down to one heart here, and I'm thinking, I can't hurt these guys without pressing a button. What am I going to do? So I sit here, and I'm, I'm thinking I can pacify the room. If you aren't aware, there's a mechanic in Isaac where if you sit in a room for two to five minutes, the room will pacify, which is a, basically, it clears the room for you. Uh, in case like, you're soft locked somehow in a regular room. The problem is, you have to be active for it to work. Also, my recording like skips here. I don't know why. I think I was running out of hard drives. It was, it was a four-hour recording, but as you can see, it, it's the same run because the blood piles are in the same place. Unless I did the run over again and killed the blood piles in literally the same exact place, I got the same exact random effects. You know, it, if, if that was the case, you'd call it splicing, but I literally just sat here for like it held down right until it was over. But unless I, you know, somehow managed to kill every enemy in the room in the same exact spot and have the same HP and all that, and consumable count and, and items and all that, Obviously, it isn't faked. <laughs> Obviously not. But, um, what was I saying? If you sit in a room for two to five minutes, it pacifies and you clear it. Problem is, you have to be active in the room for that to work. You can't just camp a room out like that. That would be lame as hell. You have to be actively moving and shooting constantly for the game to recognize you as being softlocked. Problem is, while I can move, I can't shoot. Which is my bottleneck right now. So then I'm thinking, okay, I have to kill these guys somehow. What do I have in my arsenal that I can use without pressing a button? And then I realize it. Judas' shadow. I can, I have to die and black heart bomb this room to pass through it. And then be at one heart for the rest of this floor. Until I find more hearts or a penny. This thought terrifies me. So I'm sitting here holding on to hope that I can like get this pacify to work. But I realize now it's not going to work. I just kind of sacrifice myself out here. I kind of hold down to the wall. I just kind of sit here and sacrifice myself. And then thinking, hey, you know what, man? It's been an honor see a soldier, and I wait for the guy to come down, and I, just, I walk into a tier. This is the scariest part of the run, aside from the final fight, in my opinion. Because being at one... I'm going to be at one hit, with no revives, no nothing. 
And I'm the womb where, again, I can't move my sword around. I can't shoot anything. And I have to play melee against a bunch of enemies. My next room being a big room that I could have black card bombed as well, it, it terrifies me. And I actually almost die like four times next room. But I walk in, uh, I, I instantly black card bomb. I'm like, oh shit, that was the wrong move because I got to deal with the ticks right now. My Polaroid runs out and I am stranded. I don't know what to do. I start using the finger for damage and it works out. It was great. It, honestly, it worked out great. No, I got half a soul heart That was so clutch right there from Blessed Penny. But then this room happens. And I'm like, oh shit, what am I going to do here? Because they're, I, I can't, like, you know, choose to kill these guys because finger kills them for me. That lucky ass bomb shot pays me away and I get out of there. Use the finger again. Beautiful. This is the only room in the game where the finger was actually, like, terrible to have. But I got out of it just fine. This room is next. I, I kill this, uh, you know, skinned brother guy and I move on. Another have a soul heart drop. Beautiful. Now it's Teratoma's time. Teratoma time. Gee, that's a, that's a tongue twister right there. But I get scared in this fight because I'm like, I don't want to take a bunch of random ass damage and lose everything. But of course, as I'm BD1P, I take some very, very stupid damage. And now I'm going to be at like, you know, one hit the rest of this fight. So I go hard to kill things fast and it works out. Stem cells drop, which is huge. It's an H of Blackheart for us back at regular stats. And I move on to probably the highest chance of dying on the entire run this floor. This is where I got to realize I got to start playing more. I was treating this run as a speed run in my eyes. That's all I do with my time is I'm a speed runner. I had to slow down here. I had to realize, I had to tell myself, you're not going for a time here. You're going for a completion. Don't throw the run away just for a little bit of extra seconds to spare for yourself. Play smart and play safe. I noticed right about now that I'm going to need more HP for mom or mom's heart because mom's heart is going to be difficult. I can't stand, you know, below or above her accurately. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm I'm going to need a damage boost, Polaroid invincibility through that fight. How do I do that? And I can't open up my map, so I can't even see what's on the ground right now. But I see in the corner of my, the bottom left corner of my map, there is an arcade. And that is amazing. Because as I said earlier, arcades can drop pennies when you play pennies to other machines. I can turn those pennies into soul hearts. I can trade away my, my money for more money, which gives me more soul hearts. I'm thinking, all right, let's do that. I walk in there, I make another dumb play. I go for a blind cl uh, claw machine that never ends up paying out. I could have had 20 more cents to get HP on this floor, but no. I'm going to play this, this chance stupid item. I don't even need items. I'm, I'm so stacked. I don't even need any items right now. I could have been sure stopwatch, calc the cross, stuff like that, but I don't need the items. I need the HP. I'm getting some huge, amazing drops here. I give it one more play. Nothing happens, and I walk out. I need some water real quick. Sorry. I see those uh, fool's gold rocks in there, and I want to like I want to bomb them obviously for more money and more hearts. But alas, I cannot place bombs, so I can't do that. Pisses me off sometimes how hard this challenge was. It, th this was it took me you know I would say f like four to five hours to get past depths one, and for me to win the run on my first time down in the womb was pretty impressive. Also, this dice room is big clutch as well. I noticed hmm this is a d20 for the entire floor. If I can roll other drops into um, uh, money or just raw HP, I'm going to have a fighting chance on this run. And just and it just so happens, I play smart and I get more HP out of it. You'll see in a couple minutes here, I go back to my arcade, I play the arcade some more for some extra drops, and then I use that machine to give, use that, that, that room, sorry, to give myself some extra HP. This room kind of screwed me over. Uh, the fire shot me here, which really sucks. I tried to, you know, put it out first, but I couldn't obviously angle my tears up or down. But it, it all works out. I get some money here, I believe, into soul hearts potentially. Yeah, I, so I got I got half a heart, but I only lost half a heart that room, I guess. Still kind of big, but not as detrimental. But I walk into this room, I kill the hollow. I believe I see my boss fight in the next one or two rooms, which is which is where I decide to go back to my arcade. To get more to get more HP and survivability, and at this point on the run, I'm kind of just like shaking, right? I'm like, I this is the, the best that I've had in a long time. This has taken me forever to do, but I'm finally here. This is like a, this is a 20 minute run so far of me not pressing any button but movement for like this long. It, it was it was it was tense and dense, my friends. It was tense and dense, but I find the mother's heart fight, and I'm like, all right, boys, we can go in here. We we can actually you know do this. Of course, then I get hit by a stupid dip, and I'm like, okay, now now I need more HP, like really bad. I can't one hit the mom fight and kill her with this kind of build so i enact my d20 plan I, I was thinking about full clearing the floor first to get more drops and i thought to myself i'm like well i probably have a, a, a better chance just to raw dog mom's heart uh, as opposed to <laughs> clearing out some rooms that could potentially be like 
really, really dangerous and cramped. I think that boss fights, because they're more controlled, I have a higher chance to uh, not um, eat shit as much. Because if I walk into a closet room or a room that has a bunch of like exploding enemies in it, I'm screwed for HP right there. So I figure that just going to Mom's Heart with as much HP as I can gather right now is my best bet. And you know what? Obviously, it worked out, so it was the best bet. But yeah, I, I, at this point in the run, this is what I would have preferred to have, like, um, my finger pointing to the right or left horizontally, because that would make Satan and the leeches easier. I kill the leeches very, very fast. It would make um, Mom's heart a hell of a lot easier with being able to stand next to her and just dodge normally. And it would have probably ended up making, like, literally every other room next floor easier. But I think for early game, also raw soul heart drop there. Surprisingly enough, the only heart or penny drop I get in the entire reroll there, which really, really stings. I get one more penny, I think, but that doesn't do anything for me. I can't bomb that open, obviously, because I can't place bombs down, because it's, it's, you know, a no-button press run sort of deal. But I, I really thought that... I, I think that Finger and, and Spear facing up and down was very good for the early game bosses. But I think as it gets into later game, I think post-mom, having it both be vertical is a detriment more than anything else. Two keys here and a heart. Wonderful, right? All right, I have one more pendant to play here. I pick up the penny and nothing drops. Okay, well, you know what? I can take one uh, hit, two hits. I can take three hits on this fight. And I'm, I, I know I'm going to be fine on the mom's heart fight now. I know I'm going to be great and fine. I actually only take, I think, two hits on the fight. I could have only taken, you know, um, zero hits because I, I played, I got hit by the dumbest stuff. Laser beam right here. And I get hit by a, a random ass tear when she, when she splits. So I get a really nice bullet pattern just to stand down and hit her down there. And I walk into one of the tiers at the very end. I could have just went up and down and won that with no damage, but... <sighs> BD1P, what do you expect? And so here we go down to Shoal here, which this is where the run is going to finish off. And I think probably the most impressive play takes place. It happens with the Luna item. Luna literally saves this run, as, we, as we'll see right in the future here. But Teratoma Room is very funny because I just fought the boss like two floors ago. I believe I might get hit here. I don't remember. I don't know. I don't think I do get hit, actually. I think I play pretty safe here, but I'm looking at my HP and I'm thinking, okay, there's no way I could beat Satan on one heart, let alone like one, one hit slash half a heart. I couldn't do that, I don't think. I have no faith in myself. So I'm thinking, oh, this room also sucked. It was very, very scary, but I started thinking to myself, like, okay, well, what if I decide to use Luna for once? Now, what Luna needs to happen, well, what needs to happen for Luna to work is because I can't place bombs down. I need to find explosive leeches or an explosion enemy on this floor. And as luck would have it, this next room I go into has leeches next to my, my, my secret room. So I kill three. I, I dodge very, very nicely and well here with, with the finger, you know, just saying. And not, not killing every leech at once or, or, you know, in parts. But I kill the white leech and take no damage. And I'm like, okay, bait this guy up here. Get him to go up. He saw me through the rock. I was kind of pissed off. And then, okay, get the finger ready. Finger's ready. Boom. Open that up. I walk in. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful half a soul heart here. Which... As I lied before, I lied before, I guess. No, 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 no. This actually helps because I, I get a soul heart here by, by continuously moving. I pick this coin up very, very carefully and get that there. Full heart out of those two rooms. Right? I go left and immediately get hit right here. Because this room is brutal, man. I couldn't do much there. I, I feel like I was kind of stuck there. But now I'm back to one and a half hearts and I feel like kind of bad. I kill this and I'm like, boom. All right. So Luna giving me the extra heart and me going down this path is basically fate saying, here you go. Fuck you. I'm like, all right, I'll just go down now. Down's going to be the right way, right? It's a big room. Big rooms are always right, as we learned earlier on this run. Big rooms are always the right way to go. <sighs> it's wrong. It's the wrong way. I, in fact, almost die on this uh, monster of beam right there. I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to the like, cursed room, right? That'd be a terrible idea. I was praying for soul hearts there so hard. Soul have forgotten in there. I didn't want to risk going for it because like, I have to constantly be moving. Um, so I didn't want to go for that. But yeah, so I just had to, just to go for the Satan fight here, and it just ended off. This room hurt because I couldn't bomb anything or play that guy at all. These guys could have easily ended my life, but they chose to be passive, I guess. Little Horn goes down on two hits, and now the Satan fight is in a couple rooms here. And this this fight went very, very well for us. I actually, I think I get hit in... No, not this room, right? No, I do get hit in this room because I'm an idiot, right? He charges at me, and I go in way too close to fight him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get hit by a stupid-ass tier. I'm like, okay, I'm at half a heart. Now what do I do? This guy almost ends my life like twice. Like I almost went into the explosion there, and also there. So maybe three times. Kill him. Get a nice drop here, but a half a soul heart, and then another half. Oh my god, I have two hearts for Satan. I'm gonna get. I can do Satan. I have. I have a heart and a half. I've, I can. I feel, I feel confident right now. 
I feel better than earlier. Then I get hit, of course. And I'm like, you know what? Actually, just fuck it. I walk in. I'm just going to raw dog the Satan fight. So uh, I go ahead and I hold down into, this, into the rock here. I'm still moving, holding down into the rock. My, my little guy is bobbing behind there. You can see his head. Kill the Forgot, or the, the Fallen. Get some melee damage off. I cowered out from the leeches back there. I walk behind him again and get my, my nothing personnel kid on the back of his back there with my sword. Now, this is the coolest Satan kill of all time. I get him while he's still in armor form and kill him and end the run right there. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you want to see more runs of this, what, what, comment down below which kind of challenges you want to see next. I want to do some, ooh, sorry, I hit my desk. Some very fun stuff next. But either way, thank you guys for watching. Peace out. Check out my Twitch down below. See you later. Goodbye.